Gentlemen, the third fight of the evening is a lightweight contest. Here in the blue corner, representing the US of A, fighting out of the SSF gym in Malaysia. Please welcome Cobra Ken, Kenneth Thompson. But this might be one of the coolest of all. Kenny Cobra Ken Thompson he is one laid back guy. Yeah, absolutely. Ken Thompson, he's, he's rangy, he's lanky, he's long, he's cool. Uh, his record's one and one. He fights out of SSF Malaysia. Scientific street fighting. I love that. <laughs> Last opponent, uh, he lost in 2012 but looks to make amends tonight. His elbows and knees are something he wants to bring to his opponent's attention tonight. And he's always looking for the knockout. His nickname is the Cobra Ken. He hails from Springfield, Tennessee. And he's looking to impress the Rebel FC brass tonight. We wish him luck, Mike. Oh, nice young man. Spent a bit of time with him on Thursday, chatting away and uh, just again. So much focus for these MMA athletes. They know what they want. They've got their goals. They've set them. Lesson for all of us in life, Frank. Absolutely. It's a metaphor, the way we should live. Keep it simple. Keep it humble. Keep it fun, exciting, and keep pushing forward. That's the key. And have, like I said, lots of fun. It's got to be a fun thing, man. Find. My mum told me once, she said, find what you love and never, work, never have to work a day in your life. Boy's in great shape, isn't he, Mike? And accompanied by a Dana White lookalike there in the corner too. <laughs> yeah, I had to do a double take on that one. I've done a couple of double takes tonight because of that guy. <laughs> Maybe it's him spotting the blooming talent in the Rebel FC stable, mate. He's Maybe. already taken Alberto Mino off our hands after, after Rebel 1. for Shafiq as well. It's one of those ones as a fighter that sometimes you catch that miracle one. Absolutely. Well, Shafiq Samad fighting out of Juggernaut Fight Club. Smooth, healthy, 12-week prep. He'll take the fight anywhere. Looking to strike. If he gets the takedown, he wants to keep it on the ground. Looking, looking to ground and pound, but will utilize his jiu-jitsu skills and look for his trademark armbar or triangle off his back if he's put there. He's got strong Muay Thai and boxing. He's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's a national team rep in Muay Thai boxing and wrestling. First Singaporean to win Asian Muay Thai Championship. He's got a two and one record, has won by submission triangle and armbar off his back in previous fights. So that ground game is legit, but he only uses it as a backup. That's, that's an impressive, impressive thought process to have the game off your back to such a degree that it's only there in case you need it. That's dedication right there. Um, he, he did lose his last fight at Rebel 1 against Gyo Pyong with, with that flying knee, but according to his coach, Arvin Lalwani, he's the most promising fighter to come out of Singapore. It's all ready to be a great scrap for Rebel FC. I can't wait. It's going to be a great fight, Mike. He, that it's only there in case you need it. That's dedication right there. Um, he, he did lose his last fight at Rebel 1 against Gyo Pyong with, with that flying knee, but according to his coach, Arvin Lalwani, he's the most promising fighter to come out of Singapore. It's all ready to be a great scrap for Rebel FC. I can't wait. It's going to be a great fight, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is scheduled for three of five minute rounds in the lightweight division. When next we get our referee in charge, here's Mr. Thomas Fan. Proudly brought to you by Cystic Ticketing Agency. Firstly, to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Muay Thai fighter, standing in at six feet one inches tall and official weight 70.3 kilograms. Tonight, we're on a black and white Yako fight brand fight shorts with a professional fight record of one win, four, one loss. From the US of A, Cobra Ken, Kenneth Thompson. And his opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a talented striker, standing in at 1.76 meters tall and weighing in at 70.1 kilograms. 
Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the black, red and yellow fight shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Singapore, please welcome the Slasher Shopping Salman! Fighters, two set cage, please, for final instructions. Guys, both, you both know the rules. Listen to me at all times, protect yourself at all times. Don't touch gloves, go back to the corner. A star in waiting here at the Rebel Fighting Championship, taking on Kenny Thompson, who's got the black tights on. Uh, Safik can bridge the gap, you know. He's very rangy, very long. You know, those Muay Thai elbows and those long-ranging knees can, can be a problem. And given what happened last time, you know, he's going to be very, very, very careful when he goes in for that shot, for that, for that wrestling double leg or that single leg. So he's got to be very prepared for that. Training at Juggernaut, and uh, he's been in camp with Will Chope, so he's probably, he's probably been working with Will, you'd imagine, to give him a taste of the taller fighter. Well, he'd be perfect for him, wouldn't he? Kenny Thompson, very much oh, a nice natural athlete. Played football at high school, got a scholarship. That's American football, soccer and baseball. As he looks to move in with some Muay Thai punishment for Shafiq. You know, Shafiq holds his head up a little bit high for me. His jaw's a little bit, oh! Nice left hook by Shafiq! Kenny. Oh! Just oh, nice knee by Kenny Thompson. Good striking so far from the two combatants it certainly has been a battle royal so far tonight at the rebel fighting championship you can really tell by looking at kenny that you know he's done a lot of muay thai and you know just standing in front standing in the pocket not really care, caring about moving his head much he could pay for it let's see what happens let's see if the corner for shafik is really telling him to throw some some more left hooks or some more overhand rights because or even a head kick if he can set it up after the hands because you see how low his hands are Nice body kick by Thompson. Thompson from Nashville in Tennessee and uh, spending a lot of time in Asia, having some fun in Malaysian and Thai promotions, also lining something up in Vietnam as Shafiq moves in. Thompson's holding his hands very, very low. Oh, there's a left hook. Nice count. Oh, there's another left hook. Beautiful leg kick by Shafiq. What a combination, left hook, low right, leg kick. That's classic, classic Dutch kickboxing. Well, he notes. Oh, overhand right. Mike, he's standing there. He's just standing big there. Big target, big target for Shafiq. Well, he lists Raymond Deckers as one of his heroes and uh, that was right out of the, as you say, there the it Dutch is again. kickboxing, yeah. There are, there are a select group of combinations that we see get repeated over and over again. And there's another one. Oh, he waits for the body. Oh, no, his right hand. shafiq has got him. He's out. He's out, Mike. He's out. The local boy makes good on the Rebel Fighting Championship. As you said, Kenny Thompson making himself a big target there for the slasher. Here's a replay. Here we go. He's backing him up. He had him against the cage. And now he, there's that left hook. There's another. Oh, it's, it's over. He was, he was, it was over. As soon as he touched him with that left hook, it was done. Watch, watch, watch. Boom. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, there it is. Well, he's got that record back on track. Three wins and one loss now. The first fight on the other card is in the female strawweight division. Hailing from the Philippines, 27-year-old Sharma Devaya isn't taking Mei Ui lightly. The amateur wushu, white tie, and wrestling standout has won several tournaments in the Philippines and is looking to start her professional career off the right way. Despite a lack of in-ring experience, Sharma has all the tools to keep this fight right where she wants it and how she wants it to end. Mei Hui isn't exactly what you'd call your typical middle-aged woman. At 38 years old, Hui's accomplishments have solidified her as one of the most well-known Singaporean sportswomen in recent years. An Olympian, doctor and surfer, Hui enters her bout with Sharma Devaya to begin the next chapter of her life, the life of a professional fighter. I like to inspire women 
I would like to represent women in a good way. It's good for people to see that they can chase their dreams, live their passion. Hot off defeating Australian top teams Amy Adam, a much larger and more experienced fighter at the last Rebel FC, Ui's confidence couldn't be higher. Supported by Brazilian fight club MMA, Ui looks to repeat the result of her first bout and prove to everyone that she's got what it takes to hang with the women who fight for a living. Hey Sharma, tonight we're going to show everyone what women are made of. Bring your best game. It's time to see who has what it takes. Sharma Devaya versus Mei Ui. Absolutely, it's her first pro fight. She's feeling a little nervous as expected. She had a, a really good eight-week prep. It's a, new, it's a new area for her going into MMA. It's her first fight in MMA, but in saying that, she has wrestled in the Philippines National Games where she took bronze. Muay Thai representative in the Philippines National Games and won silver and bronze in the last two years. Game plan for tonight is to keep it standing and to go with the flow and go with her strengths. She's five foot tall, but make no mistake, she's got a massive amount of courage. That's for sure. She's against the local favorite, so it's gonna be a tough fight for Sharma, and we wish her luck and congratulate her on her pro debut. This whole event is just the whole week leading into the event. It's just incredible, you know? I just, I just love being in Singapore. It's just a beautiful place. The people are beautiful. The food is beautiful. The weather's awesome. I think you got a tan at the pool in the last I think I did, mate. I look pretty good, don't You're I? You're gonna look very handsome going back <laughs> to that Melbourne winter. Hey, that's a beautiful thing. qualified doctor and now a professional MMA fighter. She really is moving with a swagger tonight, Frank. Oh, absolutely, and why wouldn't you? Her first pro fight, she loves to come forward. She really does, and she towers over her opponent. She's a capoeira stylist and a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter. She won her last fight against Amy Adams. She's in incredible shape. She's very impressive head kicks. Look for her spinning wheel kick and her tornado kick. I saw her warming up in the locker room. She's so confident in her abilities. And who can blame her? An Olympic swimmer and a doctor. That's intelligence. <laughs> She's in the shape of her life and will not be concerned where the fight goes. Her plan is to damage her, her opponent's locomotion with her low leg attacks and then try to finish her on the feet. But if the fight goes to the ground, she'll look to finish her there. Let's see if Mayui can execute tonight at Rebel FC 2. So the Brazilian Fight Club is who she represents, is Silvio Romero and Krunoi, uh, the coaches and trainers. This girl is focused. I saw her in the locker room, she was hitting pads, whoa. Silvio just uh, wrapping up his bout from earlier on. Now hopefully we'll see some of these tornado kicks from Mayoi. But that spinning wheel kick that she has, or oh, when they spin and put that hand on the ground and get all that pressure from the ground, and then swing that leg backwards and hit you with the heel. Percy to my left, fighting into the blue corner. This woman is a Muay Thai fighter and Wushu exponent. Standing 1.67 meters tall and weighing in at 51 kilograms even. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, are in the black and purple fight shorts, making her professional MMA debut. From the Philippines, Shama Devaya. And her opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner. A former Olympic and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. Standing at 1.65 meters tall and weighing in at 52 kilograms even. Tonight we're only all black fight shorts, making her professional MMA debut. From Singapore, please welcome the Glamazon, Please, the Glamazon, gotta love that. That is a name, that's a winner. Straw weight division, May Oi from Singapore, taking on Sharma Devaya from the Philippines. May in the pink top, Sharma in the black. You ready? 
This is going to be great. The crowd already getting involved. I'll tell you what, they're keeping the hair braiding industry in Singapore going, these two girls as well. Absolutely, the girls love doing that. They love getting their hair organized. Just, and why wouldn't they? I value hair more than most, am I? <laughs> Sharma fighting for Fight Court, MMA from Bagiao. Just qualified, finished her criminal justice degree. Nice inside leg kick by Dabaya. She looks pretty comfortable in there, Mike, for her first fight, I've got to tell you. Yeah. She's just focusing on what she's doing, the job at hand. Nice leg kick. Is what we'd call in Asia a chili putty. <laughs> what? Oh, nice right hand. You know, May keeps her head nice and high. She's got to watch that against a striker like um, Devea. She's going to take her down. She's in full mount. Oh, this is where Devea did not want to be. She has full mount. She's got the Americana in. If she clears the head with her right elbow, this could be done. She's just got to clear the right hand. There it is. Oh, she's got it out. Let's see Sharma's defense here. If she can... Get out of this position, May Oi on top. Devea's got to try and flatten her left leg and get to her side and trying to trying to start to to develop an escape here. But oh, now May Oi starting to look for. I thought she was going to step over for an omoplata there, but she's just happy to just punch her in the face, Mike. They're peppering the punches at the moment. Rebel Fighting Championship May really getting some dominance here, but Sharma not giving up. Feisty performance on the bottom from the Filipina. The referee's having a good look at it. Tommy fans looking closely. May might even go for an armbar. Let's see. Just got a bronze at the National Wrestling Games, Sharma. Plenty of strength from the bottom. Trying her best to get rid of May on top. Oh, uh, he's starting to pass that knee through. She's starting to go for the armbar. She's setting it up. She's going to throw the leg over the shoulder. Here she goes. She's waiting. She's waiting. She's got the wrist caught. It's a done deal. It's the end of the fight. Wow, a couple of minutes. There and May, the glamour's on Oi, showing her strength. A brave performance from Sharma Devaya, but in the end, oh, that's the best thing too when you're the person who beats you in a fight is a doctor and can go up and <laughs> give you some medical <laughs> she attention. Checked her as well. She goes, You're all right, kid. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you'll be fine. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Good hit there from her. Uh, just totally dominated her, you know. So getting on the top of the fence on the hexagon and saluting the crowd. And that's a nasty welt on the eye of Sharma Devere. Well, she was brave. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Thomas Van puts us off in this contest. Two minutes and 38 seconds into the first round. The old winner, Mighty May Even time for some capoeira and a little advertising promotional spot for the Brazilian Fight Club based down at Turf City in Bucatima in Singapore. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Rebel Fighting Championship bout number five. The next fight is in the lightweight division. Never let a moment pass you by. Chris Barris knows this better than anyone. An undefeated Muay Thai specialist, Barris has the opportunity to make a name for himself on one of the biggest stages in Asia. A dangerous striker in every sense of the word, Barris knows his fight against Yup Yong Wang is the biggest of his life so far. By defeating the Korean powerhouse in impressive fashion, Barris's name will instantly become a breakout star within the Rebel FC arena. A technical wizard, Barris uses his incredible pace and ring control to determine how and where the fight goes, and most importantly, when it ends. Yup Young Hwang, a man of few words. Yup Young Hwang knows what it's like to be the bad guy. He knows what it's like to enter an arena full of fans cheering against you. And he knows what it's like to leave victorious. After defeating Xiafik Samad with one of the most impressive knockouts in 2013, Kip Young Guang is back in another attempt to climb even further up the lightweight ladder. And this time, there's no pressure. A power puncher with dynamite in each fist, Guang has the ability to knock out anyone at the drop of a hat. However, can he contend with the speed and technique of Chris Barris? 
Singapore. Get ready to find out in a lightweight throwdown. Chris Barris versus Yup Young Hwan. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner from the United Kingdom, fighting out of Fightworks Academy, please welcome Chris Barras. Big boys here in this event. Absolutely, Chris Barras, let me tell you, his record in MMA is 5-1-1. One, and one. His last opponent was in 2012 with a ref stoppage. He has subs, look out for his rear naked choke. He has TKOs to his name, he's a beast of a striker. He has a Thai boxing record of 5-0 and undefeated. Um, he's a purple belt under the Gracie Baja England under Rafael dos Santos and Darren Yeoman in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training out of Fightworks Academy in Torquay, England. He's Muay Thai. His allegiance is Sitsong Pinong Gym in Thailand, one of the most reputable gyms in the land. Going to be an interesting fight, Mike, as both want to keep it standing. I feel we'll be in for a treat tonight. It's going to be an all-out war. He respects Gyo Pyong's power. As we've seen it, knocking out Shafiq last year at Rebel 1. But, you know, he hasn't faced such a dangerous striker yet in Chris Barras. So, it's going to be an interesting fight. But for, for me, Chris Barras is in great shape. He's determined. He's really keen to get back into the MMA scene and to really establish himself as a solid uh, contender at this weight. So, he's 5-1-1. One, one. His game... His goal is to go 6 and 1, so let's see what Chris has tonight. And in the red corner, from South Korea, fighting out of Korean top team, the apple, Hwang Hee Poo. Dangerous hands and deadly, deadly knees. Not just knees, but flying knees. Absolutely. We saw him knock out Shafiq at Rebel 1 seven months ago, which gives him a two knockout victories in a row. Looking to finish early, wants to keep the fight standing, Mike. Doesn't like to be on his back and will look to stand and bang. He doesn't want to get on the canvas. He loves his right hand left hook combination and looks to knock out Chris, no doubt about it. He made that clear to me in the locker room. He wants a knockout, nothing less. He's had a healthy preparation. He's ready for a battle tonight. He has strong boxing and will look to impose his game plan tonight. Two big strikers in action on Rebel Fighting Championship 2. This will be a battle royale. Miguel Angel Torres taking on Takahiro Ashida. Will the Kill Chop and Mauricio Dos Santos Jr. And Yojiro Uchimura and Raiden Romero fighting for that huge purse. Quarterfinals tonight. Standing at 1.8 metres tall and weighing at 70.8 kilograms. This man is a Muay Thai fighter. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, are wearing a black, green and white fight shorts with a professional MMA record of five wins and only one loss. From the United Kingdom, please welcome Chris Ferris. Red corner, standing at 1.78 metres tall and weighing in at 70.8 kilograms with a professional MMA record of six wins for only three losses. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the yellow shorts with a black trim. This man is a striking and submission specialist and a PXC, Top FC and M1 veteran. Representing South Korea, please welcome Diablo Gokyun Chris Barris in the white trunks with the black trim and in the sexy fluoro yellow tights, the Korean Hwang Gyo Pyong. I can see you in a pair of those, Frank. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Well, if the lights go out, baby, you won't miss me at all. <laughs> Keep your eyes open for Chris Barris. He's a finisher. He really is. Both big strikers. Expect some powerful action here as they feel each other out in the first seconds of round one. And I'm sure Barris has that flying knee in the back of his mind too. He would have heard about that in the few days leading up. Yeah, but Chris Barris is a different style of fighter than Shafiq. You know, he stands in the pocket a little bit more. That canvas is pretty slippery. Now, oh, he doesn't want to go in. He's go oh, no, this is bad. This is early in the first round. This is very bad for Gyo Pyong. Chris yeah. is purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 
Well, Barris it's made the, the invitation and uh, oh, he just walked McLaren straight into accepted it. it. What an opportunity. Here he goes. He's bringing his legs up nice and high, trying to lock that right shoulder. When you see him bring their legs up like that, Mike, see how he's bringing his left leg up? He's trying to lock that right shoulder so he can't pull out. Then he's going to start to look to transition for the armbar. So Barris says, welcome to my world, Gil Pyung. And Gil Pyung trying to get some... Here he goes. Pounding Ooh, action in. He's going to try and pull out. He's got to be very careful because he's with a purple belt. He can get his arm broken here. Good striking, though, from the Korean. But again, Barris concentrating on that arm of Huang. Barris, again, is trying to control his posture. See how he's holding his head there, Mike? That's going to, that's going to minimize the amount of elevation that Gyo Pyong can have against Chris. And what that means is that if he can allow his head to come up, he can drop stronger strikes down on top of Chris. But if he holds his posture and controls him like he is, then he's only can, he can hit him with only like tip-tap style punches or rabbit style punches or ineffective style punches. Lightweight clash this, 70 kilos. Chris losing about 12 kilos, 12.5 kilos in five days. So hopefully the energy levels are where they should be too. Not to mention the adrenaline dump as well. But you know, these boys are pretty, pretty um, experienced guys. So they should be able to control that pretty well. It's very slippery out there, Mike. Really? Singapore, even with the air con, you get that humidity, a lot of sweat on the mat. And that was one thing they noted in Rebel 1 too, that it was a little slippery, this mat. Barris again is starting to lock the opposite shoulder now. So he's starting to bring the right leg on the shoulder. So now he's going for his left arm now, Mike. You see him controlling the posture, doing very well. The referee's having a good look. He wants it to keep moving. Barris having a spell in Thailand, as you say. Muay Thai gym there that he's associated with, but now, from... If, key. if Chris can't if Chris, Chris can't find a finish here, he's going to have to try and either stand up or sweep. Now sweep means to reverse the position, at least get on top. Let's see what he does. It's normal to fail a few times from your back. No guard is 100%. You've got to keep throwing that up. You've got to keep persisting. You've got to be disciplined in your attacks. Don't let them pulling out or posturing up worry you. You have to just develop a thick skin when you're fighting off your back and just keep throwing those opportunities because the fighter on top is going to be getting tired as well, Mike. And he can slip up. He can make oh, an error. Nice shot there on the left with Juan. Here he goes. You can see he's trying to sweep him. Yep. He starts, he's opening his guard. He's starting to reconsider, rethink it now. Try and maybe stand up again and start and reset. Certainly looks at home on the ground on his back, though, Burris. But Huang with a couple of good shots there on top. He's actually trying to bail a little bit now, Mike. You yep. can see his legs are open. He's trying to look for maybe a push kick away and stand up. He's going to try and clear and stand. Yep. Here he goes. See, he's trying to get some distance. Just looking at his show reel, he certainly, with his Muay Thai experience, got striking power as well, Barris. Fightworks gym and Torquies. And Yo Pyong's going to throw that right hand, Mike. He's going <laughs> to throw that right hand. You watch. He's, He's going to throw his legs to the side and come over the top with the right hand. Winding up there big time. Didn't manage a clean punch on that occasion, though, as Barris gets an elbow in from below. We're down to one minute to go, Mike. Just in the last minute of round one. It's noticeable the extra experience these guys are bringing to the ring. You know, for me, Chris has got to sweep. He's got to think about sweeping. He's got a one minute to go. If he wants to win this round, he has to get back up on his feet and then be convincing. Or reverse the position and win the round. See that right leg of his? If he can feed that right leg on the inside of his thigh, he can flip him there over. It is. Yeah, oh. He's going for it. Yeah. He's going to maybe try and insert it. He's got wrist control. He might be looking at throwing up a triangle, but... Risk control is hard to maintain with the gloves on and the sweat and the slipperiness. Here he goes, he's looking for a, starting to turn his shoulders and looking for an arm, looking for some way in for a triangle. Just seconds to go in round one. The Battle Royal with Rebel Fighting Championship. Barris versus Wang. It's got to give Gyo Pyong confidence in his guard, thinking, ah, oh, well, he couldn't even finish me in the first round in the first 10 seconds. You know, not that much sweat, not that much slipperiness. Couldn't do much. He's going to have to rethink it now. Chris, as we see the highlights of there again, the slipperiness of uh, of the floor here on the hexagon. You can see here how he's trying to control the posture and look for the armbar. You yeah. know what? If you cleared that neck, cleared that neck earlier, he may have had a shot at it. But you don't get a lot of chances against a, a seasoned professional that come out of the corner. Yes. Let's see. Especially from Barris here. We'll see what his philosophy is in round two against the Korean Huang. Chris's stand-up is impeccable. I mean, oh. 
just, just saw on a show reel there, just phenomenal, the hand speed. Yeah. So many TKOs. Nasty welt appearing on the temple there of Burris, on, high on his cheek from one of the rights from Huang in round one. Again, just checking his kicks. Yeah, Barris is just throwing single shots right, Mike. Single shots. See how he's just doing single shots? Yeah. One kick, one punch. You know, you have to, you have to set him up. You've got to go in there and, and you've got to just force it. You've got to throw some combinations. Do you think it's because he slipped in the first round, I think Frank? He's so, just keeping so. a little bit you know, that's a good more point. suspect. That's a very good point, Mike. That's a very good point. Could be. Could be that. Has to, re has to adjust his whole fighting strategy. A little bit of showbiz there from Barras. Nice spinning back kick. Yeah, they're both having a nice chuckle over that one. <laughs> well, Huang's got some tricks up his sleeve too. Oh, he sure has. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, spinning John Jones. Oh, nice right hand. Yop pyung has got some power, hasn't he? He's very explosive. Brings an airy smile to Burris's face. <laughs> that was good. They're enjoying themselves out there. Good to see. Respect from both fighters, you can see. A different level here of performance from the undercard. Oh, a nice shot from Huang, though. Barris has got to move his head, Mike. Yep. He went straight in, and then Gyo Pyung just Flush. put a right hand on him. Flush. He literally ran into his right hand. Yep. It's got, see how he's moving that head a little bit more now? Oh, jeez, they're starting to meet in the middle now, Mike. Yeah, well, they don't call him the bomb for nothing. Oh, Huang Gyo Pyung. He's almost smiling. He loves this. They breed him tough up in Korea, that's for sure. For sure. Oh, body kick. Proud nation as far as MMA <laughs> and contact sport goes. Gyo Pyong just shakes his head and goes, nah, I took that right on the ribs and it was <laughs> nothing. You never know, you know, Chris might go back to it again and hit him really hard next time, see yep. what happens. Yep. You know how I said earlier about that fighters, you know, they're really good at finding what works and just going back to it. Just keep going back, keep going back. Try and find a chink in the armor. Try and wear them down. Break them down slowly. Get in their head mentally. Real calmness there from Huang as Burris took the kick. A nice knee to the ribs there. He's just waiting for Chris to commit, and then he throws that overhand yeah. right. See if he does it again. Nice Remember counter. what I said? Nice Remember? counter. Yeah. He'll probably go back to it again. Chris has got to think this through. Nice body kick again, Chris. And those wear away after time, don't they? Oh. Those kicks to the ribs. The first one, he might be grinning, but you can see the big welt appearing there on the left side of his body, of his torso. They're slowing down a little bit now, Mike. Nice left hook. Jeez. Barris has got to start moving his head. He's going to get caught going backwards, Mike. That left hook looked menacing. Remember, Gyo Pyong has that right-hand left hook combination down. Watch him throw it over and over. He sets it up with a jab, and he follows it up with the right hand and left hook combination. So good at that. Barras, the IFC British champion at Muay Thai. And he's showing some nice kicking action, some nice striking action, but again, it's just Huang is, seems to be reading some of his attacks. Huang's just picking him off. Yeah. You wait. He'll just wait for him to commit, and then he'll go over the top. You know, if I was Chris Barris, I'd be throwing more feints, you know, like, sh like faking yep. some shoulder movement just to get him to move to and commit. then open it. Yeah, 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 exactly. One minute left yeah. in the second round. Lightweight nice clash. Jab. Huang from oh, Korea. Oh, nice right hand. See that right hand combination? Right hand, left hook. There it is oh, again. There brutal. it is again. Brutal. There it is again. There it is again. <laughs> He's stealing this round, Mike. It's going to leave a lot for Barris to do in round three if... He doesn't get back in the last seconds of round two here. See how he's throwing a single shot still, Mike? It's yep. Huang just showing his power there with a barrage of punches. Majestic stuff from the Korean. Oh, he's running to his right hand. He's only got 30 seconds to go. Oh, he's in a triangle. See if he can finish it. Oh, oh, he slipped straight out. They are sweaty, aren't they? You they can are. see on the floor and on their bodies. Hard to grip as Burris regains his a composure. Bit. His left, his left eye's closing, Mike. Yeah. His left eye's closing, Mike. Looking at the clock seconds. now, Burris. He wants to hold on this last. What's that combination? Seconds. Here it comes. Here it comes. I think Huang's going to be patient here. He's enjoying himself. You know, he might go to the body. You never know. He might. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Chris is down two rounds to none. He has to come out. He has to come out with elbows. He's got to come out with some some wrestling.
The Korean seems to be reading, reading him so effectively. He, he just kept landing that right hand left hook over and over. There it is again. That's there it is again. There it is again. There it is again. It works. When people are standing, when a fighter's standing with a head up in the air, that left hook is all is there all day for the taking. So round three, we make it Huang two rounds ahead. So Burris with loads of work to do as they nod to each other, doff their caps in praise for the performance so far. But I think Burris will want to push here. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> Such a good counter fighter. Look how measured he's so relaxed, Mike. A lot of young fighters can learn a lot from Kyo Pyung. Burris maybe wants to work those ribs again of Huang as well. Get his guard down. But so slippery on this floor. I think he's a, a little concerned about the footing. Suman Mokhtarian pushing a commentary to Burris as well. Pushing him on, winning his fight earlier tonight against the local fighter Ashraf bin Shafi. Four minutes left. I think when we see the fight go down to about two and a half minutes to go, yeah, we've got to see Chris uh, Barras coming out and Alarm trying bells. to win. Yeah, trying to win. I think he's trying to conserve some energy now, early in this last round, yeah. and then he's going to start coming in. That's good leg kicks too. See the. Huang just so strong and steady. And Barris, as we mentioned, losing over 12 kilos in five days for this clash. And I don't know if he's lost a little bit of zip there. And Huang looking down the barrel at 2 and 0 here at Rebel. It's record reading 4 and 3 so far in the career. Took a couple of years off doing his reservist training, as you do in Korea, in the army, and that'll harden you up as well. Again in the ribs. Man, has he got steel ribs in there or what? <laughs> well, they breed him tough in Korea, that's for sure. Real warrior culture up there. See, what starts to happen when you get lit up a few times, you get punched in the face a few times, you get marked up a few times, you get dropped a few times, you spend a lot of time on your back, you're in the third round, you're very apprehensive. If you were apprehensive in the first couple of minutes of the, fir of the fight, yep. in, the last, in the last round, you know, you just... You want to try some, you, you saw him kind of mimic like he wanted to throw an uppercut, but he's just a little bit tentative, you know, you know, yeah. he's afraid of getting lit up again. So this is a, it's a dangerous time for Chris, you know, he could be setting himself up to be knocked out. Well, here. he's only got half a round to here turn this fight around. All right, let's see what happens. It's yeah. 2.30 left on the clock. Let's see what he does, okay? He's got to move in here, Barras. But again, Huang proving how strong he is. He's just picking him off, Mike. Yeah. Not too much movement from Huang on his feet, but... He doesn't need to. Chris no. is standing in front of him, Mike. <laughs> Why would he need to move? But he's taking those shots on the ribs and the leg. Just smiling, happy. Doesn't bother him. He should have been doing this from round one, going to the legs there, Burris. He spent a lot of time on his back in that first round, mm. Mike. It's hard to throw leg kicks when you're on your back, you know? <laughs> so going southpaw here, Barris. Watch that right hand. You better be careful. You better stay on the outside of his front foot if he wants to go southpaw. Yeah. You're staring down the barrel of a right hand if he's not careful. Nice, another body kick. Well, Huang loves his action movies and films. And probably has the potential to star him on the, the toughness he's showing here. Chuck Norris move on over. Rebel unearthing some talent from up in Korea. Nice jab by Barros. All right, that's better. That's much better. Well, he's Chris only got Barros. a minute 18 to well, turn this around, though, Frank. It's all uh, very well having a great exhibition, but he wants to win this fight. Well, I would have thought he would have started moving a little faster, a little harder earlier in this last round, but oh, hey, it's, it's better than better than not moving fast and not being uh, aggressive. I can't believe how, how Huang reads that, that straight kick from Barros. He just stands there. And watches it millimetres away from his nose. He's how tough is Huang. Here he goes for the take. Oh, he's got him down. Oh, here he goes. He's got 45, 45 seconds. seconds. Last stanza of this fight. It's been a beauty. Chris Barris travelling all the way from the UK to take on the Korean Huang Gyo Pyung. It's been an incredible performance by Huang Gyo Pyung. Right, really underlying his credentials. And uh, when they start handing out the lightweight belt, 
here at Rebel. He'll be in the forefront of Chad Sanderson's mind as he matches the fights for title bouts. Just 10 seconds left, and Barris, well, he's not going to win from there. The Korean wrapping him up in all sorts of trouble. Huang Daipol Gui Pyong. And that's the end of the clash. 15 minutes of great action. Barris dragged to his feet by the Korean. But this will go to the judges' cards. Now the judges tonight are Morgan Perkins, Brett Leming, and Roger Chan. And let's see what they've got on their cards. Flurries of punches in round two, and just doing what he had to in round three, really. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge number one had a 29-28. Judge number two had a 30-27. And judge number three had a 30-27 for your winner, Brett Corner from Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battle Royal. The tournament is in the featherweight division. Yojiro Ujimura wants you to underestimate him. Happy-go-lucky outside the ring. This would-be chef has a secret. He can hit hard. Very hard. With almost all of his 11 victories coming by way of KO or submission, Yojiro Uchimura has fought some of the biggest names in both Japan and Brazil and come out on top. A former K1 kickboxer, Uchimura has the ability to knock you out with anything from anywhere. A disciple of the legendary Crazy B in Ingram Gyms in Japan, Yojiro has dedicated himself to the way of the warrior. Chef by day, martial artist by night, Uchimura is here to beat up Raiden Romero and have fun doing it. The Philippines is known for producing some of the most respectful, passionate martial artists in the world. Raiden Red Romero is one of them. A Muay Thai specialist, Romero's natural ability has seen him become one of the most skilled fighters coming out of Manila. He is the current URCC featherweight champion, and his confidence is at an all-time high. To Romero, Uchimura is nothing but a bump in the road on the way to the Rebel FC Championship, a road he hopes will take him to the only man in the tournament that has ever defeated him, Will the Kill Choke. So now, I'm surprised because they gave me this opportunity it's a battle of strikers. Muay Thai specialist Raiden Romero, king of kickboxing, Yojiro Uchimura. Who is going down? Yojiro Uchimura versus Raiden Romero. Well, you don't become a Philippines URCC champion for nothing. And this guy's walking around with a belt on his hips. Featherweight division, our knockout competition starts. Three big fights here. He'll be taking on Yujiro Ichimura, Will Chop, and Mauricio Dos Santos, and then the legend of MMA, Miguel Torres, and Takahiro Ashida. Raiden Romero, his plan, well, you know, he represents Dev Tat Jim in the Philippines. He's got a 7 and 1 MMA record. He's going to keep it standing. It's, he's just, it was very straightforward game plan. Keep it standing. He's feeling good, feeling fit. He's very experienced, seven knockouts, three submissions. When he wins, he nearly he finishes. Eight week prep, healthy, no injuries. He's gonna go for the knockout. He's got devastating leg kicks, he wants to utilize them. Doesn't want to go to the ground, but he's a blue belt of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Again, not a bad backup plan. 
They're going to keep the fight on the feet, obviously, and makes a very interesting battle but tonight between Yojiro Uchimura and, of course, his opponent, Raiden Romero. You know, Uchimura was very relaxed in the, in the locker room, getting ready for the fight, is very happy, smiling. Out of DevTech and representing the Philippines, please welcome Raiden Red Romero. Fighting out of England and representing Japan, please welcome Yajiro Uchimura. Fight is two center cage, please, for final instructions. Round one, the start of this bout. Mike Rihu. And Frank Barker with you, talking you through Battle Royal for Rebel Fighting Championship. Ray Jeez. Romero, Inside camouflage ledge. trunks. Uchimura, the white trunks, silvery grey perhaps. Now in the stats it says Uchimura's got a height advantage, but I don't think that's true. I think Romero fudging a little on his height there, a lanky fighter. It's a nice shot in there. On the side of the face, but... Withdraws pretty quickly. There's a leg kick, probably watching Kim do his business in the fight before. A very good tool in, in MMA, that leg kick. Any, any combat sport, that leg kick, it just takes the spring out of your step. That's all. We saw that with Sam K. Look how much power he had in that first round. And then by the end of that first round, not much drive off that leg. Oh, beautiful left hook or right, right hook. Oh. oh, nice counter. Romero goes into wrestle, trying to take him down. Wow, oh, beautiful transition. Good strength from Uchimura. Uchimura on top. He's in top half. What's he going to do? Is he going to pass or is he going to drop some elbows? Let's see what he decides to do. Romero needs to get his head underneath. He's got to get underneath his hips and start to elevate him and get him to post on his arms instead of punch. Sometimes I think, Frank, you should be in their corner. So much technical knowledge when they get on the ground. Thank you. Our oh, man with well, the jiu-jitsu knowledge. Well, well, Romero's doing well. He's clinching, and that's going to minimize the amount of damage he can take. You can see every time. See by clinching, see the difference? Uchimura can't, he can't punch because he's worrying about his base. Look, look, that's what a good clinch can do. The lessons to be learned there. Good work technically from Romero. He's holding him. He wants to stand up. Obviously, he's not trying to advance, but... But he's got the right idea, you know, clinching is going to stop the person from getting leverage. That's the important thing. When there's no gi, when there's no garment involved to hang on to, you have to wrap your limbs around the person and control the hips, control the shoulders, control the legs. So now Uchimura might look at trying to advance the mount. If he feels like he can't punch, he's going to clinch back and he's going to use that shoulder pressure and the ground and gravity and friction to slice that knee through to advance to a mount position. He might even go to the back here. Romero. Oh, he's in side control. He's got the pass. Don't forget, he's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so he's got game off, off the ground and he's on top. Showing some real ability here, Uchimura. His first fight out of Japan. Romero's trying to take the back, but with Uchimura with that underhook, that left arm underneath the armpit, that blocks the back take. The ability for Romero to go to his back has been shut down because of that underhook. See, he's leaning on that side. Nice reversal. Uchimura's going to have to stand up. That was a good decision. Very good decision. He's going to try and sw flip him over, but he's got his back to the cage. Very difficult to do. Crowd preferring it there on, the, on its feet. You might see him lace the inside. Oh, he's going to back away. Nice. High single there. Great head position by Romero on the inside, avoiding being exposed to a choke. Yeah, good strength from Romero. He's been clinching for two or three minutes, and then bang, he's power to lift that leg up. That's a good point you're raising there, Mike. That's called squeeze. And squeeze is developed by squeezing and by clinching consistently and regularly in your training. You develop this incredible anaconda power. But he's just fallen on his back. Uchimura, Uchimura's taking advantage and landing oh, some Uchimura's big shots. Uchimura's coming with a kill, he Julio. At the end of the fight. Julio decided it's all over. He might, have, he might have gone out there, Mike. I couldn't see from where I was standing. You could see Julio was uh, really in there, the referee, quickly. He's showing concern. We couldn't quite see why. But obviously, Uchimura with strength and power coming through and finishing this fight. 
very quickly. A minute left in the first round. And boy, what a performance from Yojiro Uchimura. Must have been a big shot on the way down that clipped him. We'll see the replay in just a second. Uchimura using gravity and the power of the fall and taking Romero out. So Romero was not seeing red. He was seeing stars we see there. And that's why referee Julio Amakita stepping in to end this contest in the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Julian Abakita puts himself in this contest. Three minutes and 46 seconds in the first round. Your winner by TKO, Yojiro Uchimura. Let's see what Uchimura has to say to Frank Barker. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please, for your winner, Yojiro Uchimura. Hey, hey. I am Level SC and I am Singapore. Thank you. Saluting the crowd, hoping to get some support for his next clash as he moves down the road. Coming up next, some more electrifying MMA action. It's semi final two in the Battle Royale. Ladies and gentlemen, the next fight is a contest in the featherweight division. One of the most controversial fighters in Asia, American born Will the Kill Choke has had a roller coaster ride of popularity that has seen him experience incredible heights and devastating lows. Known as the tallest featherweight in the world, Choke left the life he knew behind when he was just 17 years old. Choke spent a year with the military before taking a one way trip to Thailand where he discovered his true passion, fighting. When I was a kid, all I ever wanted to be was a warrior, you know? You want to be a, I want to be a warrior, I want to be a soldier. Will's career has taken him across the world and in and out of the UFC. Though his sudden release will forever be a dark cloud hanging over his career, Choke knows his way back to the spotlight starts with the Rebel FC tournament. Looking for redemption in Singapore, the 23-year-old Muay Thai specialist will strive to make an example of Mauricio Dos Santos Jr using his destructive knees and elbows to send the Jiu-Jitsu black belt back to Brazil. Mauricio Dos Santos Jr. is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, a Brazilian MMA champion, and he's coming for blood. While he might not be the most well-known of the Rebel FC Battle Royale competitors, he's certainly the most outspoken. Known as Fachau, Mauricio Dos Santos Jr. doesn't hide the fact he dislikes Will Choke. And what the 1.62 meter Fachau doesn't like he breaks. Bachau versus Choke will be a David versus Goliath matchup. But the feisty Brazilian will not back down. He knows this is his chance to introduce himself to the world in a big way. And he will not let the chance pass him by. It's a battle of America versus Brazil. Will Choke versus Mauricio Dos Santos Jr. In the blue corner, from Brazil, fighting out of Centurion fight team, Mauricio Fracchiao Dos Santos Jr. Mauricio Dos Santos Jr. known as Fracchiao. And boy, there's been some trash talking in the lead up to this fight, Frank Barker. Oh, are, you, are you kidding me? Man, Mauricio Fracchiao Dos Santos. I, I went backstage and I said, oh, I want to ask him some questions. and. And I, and I said, what's your game plan? He goes, I want a war. I want to kill. I'm like, man, that's that's pretty serious. Game plan tonight is to go to war. As I said, he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under Dracolino. His Muay Thai is stellar. Strong wrestling, great boxing. He means business tonight. On the ground, watch out for his rear naked choke. It's brutal. Anyone, he takes someone's back, he finishes. He's here. He's ready. It's going down. It's going to be a war. In the red corner from the US of A, fighting out of the Juggernaut Fight Club. Please welcome Will the Kill Joe. Well, he may be from the USA, but spent his last three or four years here in Asia learning the ropes of mixed martial arts. Let me tell you something about Will Choke. Three months training with Arvin out of Juggernaut Fight Club. He's been there for three months. He's been training with you know with some some great guys. Some have been on this card already. 
with Shafiq, I think he was training with Shafiq yep. as well. Game plan is to keep it standing. He's going to try and stuff the takedowns. Will Chope is a cerebral fighter. He's becoming more and more scientific. He won't kick high at all unless he's attacking with hands first to set it up because he doesn't want to run the risk of getting taken down. Watch out for his clinching and his knees, Mike. He wears you down and then takes you down and then chokes you out to sleep. That's the deal with Will the Kill Chope. And I can't wait to see this fight. I've been busting for this. I can't wait. It's going to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, when the action begins, our referee in charge is Mr. Thomas Fan. Firstly, Tomato fighting out of the blue corner, fighting out of Centurion Fight Club, a submission specialist, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt from Belo Horizonte, Brazil, the WOCS champion. Please welcome Faxia Mauricio dos Santos Good Junior. Tomorrow, fighting out of the red corner with a professional fight record of 19 wins with only seven losses. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the black and red fight shorts, a Muay Thai expert and former UFC fighter. Please welcome Will the Kill Joe. Fighters, two set of cage plays for final instructions. He's gonna run straight at him. There you go. He wants to close that distance. Look. Yeah. He's a sal. Oh, front kick to the chops. Look at Will. Look at Will. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. He's got He's some range, <laughs> that's for sure. Will oh, the kill. Right. A featherweight competition, believe it or not. Knockout competition here at Red Bull Fighting Championship. Dos Santos has got to be really careful. And he's doing the right thing. Like he's picking his moment, he's taking his time. And when he's ready, he's going to go in. You're going to see looping hands. You're going to see low to the body, high to the head. There it is. There it is. That nice single. Beautiful on that single. Deep as hell. Whoa, he's got him down. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Mike. This could get really interesting quickly. Yeah, well, Will Chop, he was telling me, too, that he wanted to strike from distance. Didn't want to get involved on the ground here. So, as you can see, just trying to get to his feet. But, oh, against the black belt madness of Dos Santos. You know, Chope has got to punish him, you know, if he's, if he's going for the, you know, classic. If, if a wrestler wants to take you down, he may take you down, but you've got to punish him along the way. You've got to make him pay. You've got to make him second guess himself. You've got to make him think, well, may, maybe I want to think twice about going in on that single, you know. If he makes a mistake and leaves his head there, Chope's going to punch it. Like, Chope's okay. Like, right now, he's all right. Yep. But you can see Mauricio right now, he's not Sliding thinking of up. punching him. Yep. Marisha should think about punching him and dropping some elbows. At least he can get him thinking about that while he passes. Trying to get that butterfly guard going. Look at that head there, position yep. right on the jaw. That's classic. As you said, he wants war. He's going to grind away here. Chop trying to keep his position against the side of the netting. Dos Santos Jr. is doing a great job in controlling him. You can just see the experience right there. Look at the weight. He's just driving into his chin, just keeping him on his back. Well, he's 33 years old, Dos Santos. It's his 19th fight. He's 10 and 8, but if, loads if, of experience. If Chope tries to get up, he's going he's gonna to try and use the case to get up. Here he goes. He's going to get up. Oh, is he going to stay down? He's looking for the guillotine. He's reversed oh. it. Well, he's known for that guillotine. Oh, he's reversed the position. That was a beautiful move by Chope there. Very but masterful. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He's got to be super careful. Yeah. Oh, he's punishing Dos Santos at the moment, though. Good period here for He's looking for Will an Chop. arm. Just trying to retain his clarity here, Dos Santos. You can see him looking for an opening. As a black belt, he's probably been in this position many times before. Chope's got to be super careful here, Mike. You know, yes. he does have a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt underneath him. So pick your shots. You know, don't, don't get too over-exuberant. You know, don't get too anxious. You're in the top position. He's, he's stuck against the cage. He's on his back. Just use your leverage. Use your weight. Use your long levers, those elbows. What a fantastic first three minutes of this fight we've seen. The it's Santos a chess on top. match. Oh, it's a really? Chess match. Really? And that's what war's all about. Some strategy. Great, great strategies coming in here. You're absolutely right, Mike. Excellent point. Chop. An amazing career. Lost his first five fights, then bang. Got to 19 and 7. Wants to fight 100 fights. That's his aim. 
He's a warrior. Bacal trying to Stand get up. against here. And Chop really giving it here to Dos Santos. Wouldn't have expected this turnaround after a couple of minutes in the fight. Chop showing his toughness. 110 left in this first round, Mike. Chop's doing a great job here. It wasn't what he wanted, but man, he's got the top position and he's, and he's scoring. Yep. He's stealing this round. Real determined stuff. This is going to set both of these athletes. You can see already the strain showing on them. Chop off. Oh, he's going for a leg hook. Oh. He's going for that heel hook. Ooh, he's going to spin out. He was out. He's out. Well done from Chop. Oh, but it's back on top. Yeah, 42 seconds left in the round. Important time here for Chop. He's had a good period. What an interesting clash this is of styles. And 30 seconds, Mike. What an exciting round one, Mike. Dos Santos now on top. Past the... Chop just so much taller. It must be, it's a huge advantage, even on the ground. Yeah? Absolutely. There's 10 seconds left. What a brilliant first round this has been. A battle royal indeed. There's the Hooter goes for the end of round one. And that is masterful stuff from both these athletes. Look at him concentrating, the look of concentration on his face. Absolutely. Of but you working. can see, True, that's true. But you know, I'd like to see Dos, uh, Dos Santos Jr. while he's on top, if he's on the ground, to throw some leather, yes. throw some elbows, just to get Chope to think about striking a little bit and maybe open up the pass. He's got the skills to do it, he's got the skills to finish. But I think Chope is well and truly ready for whatever um, uh, uh, Dos Santos throws at him on the ground, just in submissions only. And dangerous moment. Oh, very <laughs> dangerous moment. Exciting stuff, Mike. Yeah, really. Round two. And Frank Barker calling this one Round for you two. at Rebel Fighting Championship. I think conditioning is going to play a big part. If this goes deep into the third with the similar kind of strategy, it's going to be... See, I think... Dos Santos Jr., you know, he, if, he, if he slows down a little bit, it's going to be an easy pickings for, for Will Chope. Let's see what happens. The oh, lanky oh. madness. Oh, oh, oh nice left moving hook. in for the counter. Oh, nice right hand. Oh, oh beautiful knee. knee. Right in front of us here, Mike. Yeah, fantastic to see. Oh, beautiful double down. leg takedown by Dos Santos Jr. But again, let's see if Chop can just keep his head. He's got wrist control on that left side. He's going to look for a triangle. He's going to hold him and throw some elbows. Nice oh, elbows some from the nasty bottom. nuts there being cracked from the elbow of Chop. It's a sharp elbow too. <laughs> it is. And that's it. Dos Santos just having so much trouble passing guard with the huge lanky body of Chop. He's got to get busy now, you know. Dos Santos Jr. has got to start doing something. He's inside his guard. He's winning, according to the judges. <laughs> oh, nice. He's looking at doing that. Doing that. Uh, bullfighter pass, he's got the neck. Has he got anything left? Oh, he let him stand up. Relentless stuff though from Dos Santos at the start of round two. Generally when you see him get that front head control on the ground and they're a ground specialist mm. and they just hang on, they're tired. Yeah. And that gives Chope a chance to stand. He's, he looks a bit tired, looks a bit weary now, Dos Santos. Yep. Blowing hard if here. If he doesn't keep moving, those high head kicks are coming. Yep. The lanky madness. Three months of juggernaut's going to do that. Look, he just ate a body kick. Nice left hook. Tried it again. Beautiful single leg. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice well sprawl. Beautiful sprawl by Chope. He's on top now. Yeah, just holding off though. Come on, let's get it on our toes, he's saying. And the crowd love that. Tell him the... Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt to get on his feet. Let's fight it here. Says Chop. Probably a wise move. Just that height distance. They're winding them up, isn't he? But easy. He's got to set him up with his hands first or else yes. it's too telegraphic. Yep. It's too obvious. Yep. And that's what his plan was too. See the hands first, but you know then what? the legs. Will, Will's, oh, oh, he just ate a bit of that shin. Yeah. You know, 
Will's head is, is up and, and straight because, you know, when you fight a smaller opponent, yep. you find that your head is a little held up. You gotta, you gotta lower your shoulders and lower your frame a little bit so you're covering your jawline. A couple of times, Dos Santos Jr. has had access to that chin. He nearly landed a couple of good left hooks, but Ooh. it looks bad for him right good now. Good elbows there from Chop. Two minutes left, Mike. So over halfway through this fight, and it's just flown. It's been an amazing clash. This Chop really showing his experience now. His conditioning too, like yep. he's... He's, he's looking fresher out of the two, Mike. <laughs> he's playing the crowd too. Oh, there was some trash talk here. The Dos Santos he's calling. He's tired, Mike. Calling Chop a drunken giraffe, and and uh, Chop replying saying he's going to beat Dos Santos better than Germany beat Brazil in the Football World Cup. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. He sets that up well every time. Yep. But Chop managing to play it well on the ground. Dos Santos has cut. He's got his back. Oh, full mount, Will Chop! So open him up here, Dos Santos. He might, he's got, oh, nice recovery from the guard, but Dos Santos Jr. is tired. Yeah, really this, tired. This, this, is looking, this is looking bad. He's been very, very gallant in his efforts. We'll see what he can muster up now. One minute to go in this round, Mike. Now, Brazilian fighters haven't had much luck in, in Rebel. We had a couple of uh, them fighting in... The first one, well, Alberto Mina, he was the exception. Wow. Amazing performance. But, uh, Vinicius went down. Silvio Romero went down earlier tonight. Not looking too good here for Dos Santos. It's a hell of a flight, of course, to Singapore. It's a good 30-hour job. Whereas Chop, just signalling for him. <laughs> Arvin Lelane. Lawani. He wants him to go after yeah, him. Yeah, just going in here. He wants the, him to finish. Yeah, going He's got for 23, the kill. 23 seconds, Mike. Let's see, he might go up the middle with that front kick. You never know. Ooh, oh, there's there a it knee. is. <laughs> <laughs> Telepathic from Frank Barker. No, I knew. I know the future. I've got a crystal ball. Come on. <laughs> 30 years Dos in Santos. stand up martial arts will do that. Into the last few seconds of round two, though. But Dos Santos showing he's got a little bit of fight left in him. Yeah, the Terrier from Brazil. But, uh, wow, this has been an impressive performance from Will Chop. It's also been an impressive performance to me uh, by Dos Santos Jr. I mean, look, look, at the, look, look at the size difference. I mean, I know they're the same weight and all. I get that. I understand. It's a David and Goliath situation here right now. And, and Ashida going up next. The winner of that fight will take on the winner of this. You can see Dos Santos Jr. bridging that gap and getting the takedown. I think that might, might have been early. I think maybe in round one. Um, I think this might have been round. You can see the size difference. I mean, that's unbelievable. It looks like me out there. Again, now you can start to see that he's on the end of the lever. Yeah. You can see that well, he's he set that flurry up with the hands. It was yeah. a great point you made there. A few telegraphic. So into round three. Third and final round. Round three, Mike. I think Will's looking for the finish here. Really? He's in the driving seat. Yeah. Dos Santos Jr. He's going to do everything he can. He's a Brazilian man. He's going to throw. He's going to die trying. Yep. There he goes. He's going to throw that looping overhand. Will's got to still be have his wits about him until he tags him and slows him down. Yep. See, those punches are coming slower and slower. He's tired. He's got the underhooks. Good combination there from Dos Santos, though. He's going to pop out the back. He's going to pop out the back. He's going to pop out the back. There he goes. It's getting slippery. Oh, nice. He just shrugs him off, throws Good him off. strength from Chop. Again, Chop's got to be careful here. See, see Dos Santos Jr. just move away from the cage there. Yep. He needed some space to work. See, he needed it. Yeah. But very, very wise on Will Chop to push him back in there. Minimise his ability to turn his shoulders to get angles for arm bars and triangles and escapes. Dos Santos, well, he's had experience beating UFC fighters. He's downed Wagner Campos earlier this year. And he's a gutsy performer. You can tell he's never going to give up. He's, he's looking for that hill. Oh, that's deep. Oh, my God, that's deep. Chop it's right again. again. Oh, nice what a escape. great Beautiful escape. Beautiful escape. Slippery work from Chop. He's shown a couple of times now he's been able to just slip those leg hooks. Dos Santos Jr., you know, he's still trying. It's, it's, it's 3.30 left in the third round. He's still trying to finish the fight. That's, that's incredible. Just shows you the heart of the Brazilians.
It's just controlling those hips. Chop really a child of Asia now. Because of his length, he doesn't have to pass the guard. No. Look at him. He could actually be another meter <laughs> in front and he'd still be able to punch him, you know? He's crazy, isn't it's he? It's incredible. It's incredible what leverage he's got. Look, look, look. He's starting to bring in the elbows from his butterflies. That's amazing. Yeah. Doesn't happen too often, does it? Dos Santos 30 Juniors. centimeters. Dos Santos trying to sit up, trying to put him in the cocoon, which is a sitting up position from butterfly guard. Still trying. Will Chobe just, just tap, tap, tapping away like Nick and Nate Diaz do. Again, again going for that heel hook. Oh, this one looks a bit tougher too. It might be. Can't escape the first grip. He can't. I don't think he can get his hands together to finish it. Yeah, Chobe showing a bit of concern, but oh. No, not at yeah. all. He's, no? He's, he knew where he was. Yep. He knew where he was. It's pretty safe there, Mike. Yep. It looks, it looks terrible, but he knew where he was. He can feel where the, the if the heel's not hooked, yep. he's okay. Two minutes left of this fight. Rebel Fighting Championship. The Battle Royal. Got Miguel Torres coming up next. Can you imagine if Will submits? He submits <laughs> to Santos. A feather in the cap, that's imagine for sure. A black belt from Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> Another one for the highlights reel, that's for sure. He really wore him down, didn't he? He just yeah. persisted with his game plan and just continued to, to execute and just keep follow up. You know, keep standing up, keep banging away, keep throwing those hands. You know, wrestling, reversing positions off the ground, escaping footlocks. He's done the work. He's obviously done the work. Arvin from Juggernaut's done obviously an incredible job with Will over the last three months. It really shows. Well, looking down the barrel at 2-0 and o for the Juggernaut Fight Club tonight. Shafiq earlier this evening finishing his opponent. So, so far a good night's work. We've got a minute to go though. Anything can happen. Dos Santos, as you say, is never giving up. Never giving up. There's always a chance when he's on the ground here. It's going to be a really long minute, Mike, yeah. for Dos Santos Jr. But these Brazilians are unbelievable. They've got hearts like lions. They will go out on their shield. There's no doubt about it. Quitting is not an option. Look, stands up again. He's learned oh, so much. Eats oh, eats a big knee. Big knee, and now he's retreating. Oh, Dos that Santos left eye. Here. That lead takes a big breath. Took a big, took a big breath there. He might try and go for a head kick here. He might set him up with a jab. He's looking, he's looking. Nice. Dos Santos is in shape, man. He just keeps coming. Yeah. Oh, another knee to the head. Oh. Oh, he's, he's split him open. He's busted him open now, Mike. That left eye is busted open. Yeah, and tired Look out for now. that head kick. Oh. Look for that head kick. Tries. Oh, there it is. Watch to the front kick up the middle. There Last it is. Him. Watch another head kick. It might come up. Here we go. Chop. Showing. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. A little lack beautiful. of humility here in the oh, last second. So. No. From where he's come from, five defeats in his first five fights. You see there, just slipping the leg lock and heel hook of uh, Dos Santos. And just coming at him. Staring down the barrel. Now Dos Santos wanted to go to war. And that's what he got, a battle royale. From the red corner, USMA will the kill show. So there it is, confirmation of the final. Thank you, Singapore. Thank you to my gym, Juggernaut Fight Club. Yo, the best gym in Singapore. They're making me a great fighter. Congratulations again. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Will the kill show. This is our final fight in the Battle Royal. Crown the first Rebel Fighting Championship featherweight champion and our main event of the evening. One of the fastest rising talents in Japan, Takahiro Ashida is a man who lives to fight. With a background in judo and boxing, a deadly combination, Ashida has scored knockout after knockout en route to his Rebel FC debut. Competing in Singapore for the very first time, Ashida brings with him a fiery determination to win the Rebel FC tournament and claim his first international MMA title. Young, bold and restless, Ashida not only believes he can defeat Miguel Torres, he knows it. And tonight, he's going to show the world why.
He's one of the most decorated mixed martial arts superstars the world has ever seen. A former WEC champion and UFC contender, Torres is a veteran of nearly 50 fights. His record stands at an astounding 41 wins with only seven defeats. Many believe Torres' best years are behind him, but this Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and bantamweight legend not only wants to prove his doubters wrong, but silence them for good. For me, I'm happy with the draw. I think I picked one of the most hardest guys to go against the first round, and I'm glad I could take him out the first round. From Paru brawls to the biggest stages in the world, Miguel Angel Torres has done it all. But can he overcome the vitality of a younger opponent, thirsty for victory? The Dark Horse versus the Icon. Power versus experience. The East versus the West. Singapore, get ready for your main event of the evening. Miguel Torres versus Takahiro Ashida. Out of the blue corner from Japan, out of the brave fight team, Takahiro Ashida. Kome Okada, where he won by KO, is a knockout machine. His game plan is to keep it on his feet. He's a total package and will take Miguel Torres wherever he, he wants to go tonight. It's going to be a war and he's ready. The Japanese have arrived and it's going down tonight, Mike. No doubt about it. Well, we saw a great performance from Uchimura earlier. He took out the Filipino, Ray Romero. So I'm sure Ashida would like to make it two from two for Japan. Martial Arts Academy from the US of A, Miguel Angel Torres. That guy is going to be a Hall of Famer. In my opinion, I think that guy is going to be a Hall of Famer. I asked him in the locker room, I said, Miguel, I said, how many fights you had? He goes, after 47, I stopped counting. He's had about 57 fights or something. It's an incredible, illustrious career. He dominated, he absolutely dominated his weight class, for so that banner weight division, for how long? It was seven year reign. You know, the WEC, what he did in WEC, no one did. And then, you know, he obviously just, that, that reputation is just precedes him. It's incredible, he's dangerous everywhere. His guillotine is, listen Mike, I'm calling it now. If he wins this fight, I got a feeling it might be by that guillotine choke. He finishes so many people. His Marcelo team, the way he does it, he brings his elbow nice and high up on the shoulder, uses his leverage and literally tries to decapitate his opponent. It's such an incredibly powerful choke, and he's a master at it. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, you know, incredible, incredible conditioning. He's gone back old school, Mike, old yeah. school. You know, he, his record is so big, we don't even really know. Last fight, May 31st against Wade Choke, where he won by guillotine, believe it or not. Great prep training, his butt off, real old school, and keeps grinding away at his craft has worked hard on his stand-up and looks to really impose his striking tonight. He's super motivated and that's where Miguel Torres likes to be. It's all about headspace and Miguel is in it tonight. He's not too fussed about what he does. 
but she just wants to find a way through the, through the armor of Ashida and put him away. It might start out as a stand-up affair. He might stand up and say, well, I'll try and knock him out. If he starts to, to get a taste for Ashida's power, he might try and wrestle and take him down. If Ashida takes him down, pulls guard, he might look at trying to finish the fight. If, if Ashida shoots in on him for a lazy, sloppy single or a double, my, mark my words. Mark my words, Mike. He's going to go straight in for that guillotine. I'm just calling it now. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Suntech Sycamore and the Park Sovereign Hotel and Super Sports Arena in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, three by five in a rounds. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, these two warriors now step into the cage to go toe to toe in the oldest proving ground. As ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the Rebel Fighting Championship Committee, matchmaker Chad Sanderson, timekeepers Julian Say and Benjamin Guam, and our head official, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Julian Abakita. And when the action begins, ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge is Mr. Thomas Fan. When the action begins, ladies and gentlemen, our judges at cage side, Megan Morgan Perkins, Brett Leming, and Roger Chan. Introducing first to my left, parting out of the blue corner, standing at 1.72 meters tall and weighing in at 65.7 kilograms, with a version record of 13 wins, with only two losses, two by way of submission, five by way of knockout tonight ladies and gentlemen we're in the red shorts with the black trim fighting out of the brave and representing japan please welcome the japanese buzzsaw takahiro ashida and his opponent to my right fighting out of the red corner standing at 1.75 meters tall and weighing in at 64.6 kilograms with easy a professional MMA record of 41 wins with only seven losses. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a camouflage fight shorts. This man is MMA royalty. A UFC and WFC WSOF veteran, the former undisputed WEC Bantamweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Singapore welcome, Miguel Angel. Touch gloves. There's no leather exchange. There's plenty of forehead there, Frank. Promises Man. to be. I got goosebumps. Miguel Torres, Ashida, Takahiro Ashida, unbelievable. A battle royal is what it's been, and we got one fight. This main fight, the main event at Rebel Fighting Championship. Torres, there in the camouflage short. And Rebel Ashida from Japan in the red trucks. No touch of the gloves there, Mike. Ashida look, Ashida's looking to just pounce. He's going to look to throw that left hand to Southpaw. Torres has got to stay on the outside of his right foot if he wants to stay safe. Nice head movement by Torres. Beautiful. The way he got out of that pocket, that was beautiful. Nice side kick to the body. Ashida's plan, you can tell, is just to keep the pressure on him the whole fight long. Yeah. It's five rounds, he's going to wear him down. Torres. Beautiful leg kick. That's two leg kicks, Mike, on Torres's front leg. Torres has gone to Southpaw as well. So versatile, Torres, as you say. Oh, beautiful anywhere. straight left. Jeez. He wants to show Ashida some Mexican boxing. <laughs> Getting the face of Ashida here, but Ashida's moving forward with purpose. He's not intimidated at all by, by Torres. Lands a nice right hook. Oh, beautiful left hand. Jeez, Torres, his hands are so sharp tonight. He told me in the locker room that he's really worked hard on his stand-up. He wants to showcase his striking. He's not afraid to stand there and strike. He's not afraid to get hit. Keep coming forward. Keep, keep him guessing. Beautiful leg kick. You know, it looked like uh, Ashida checked that, but he ate every bit of that, Mike. Now he's got him guessing, see? 
very quickly. Look, Torres, is now it's going to start to shift, Mike. You're going to start to see Yoshida start to back up a little bit, start to stand in the middle. He's not moving forward as much. See how it changes the tone of the fight? Just by landing some shots, it starts to get into your head psychologically. This is warfare, Mike. This ain't no game, son. Torres, like a coiled spring. You know, Ashida's looking very tight. He's wound tight. That takes a lot of energy to, to, to stand with that much tensity. Look how relaxed Torres is. Mm. Anything can happen, but look how relaxed he is. Torres is almost like pulling him in to his game. Look, 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 look. Nice cover up by Torres. Good. Good defense by Torres as well. Ashida looking strong in that aggressive forward movement there with his hands. Very good with that, with that hook coming over the top. Of course, Torres, when said and done on his feet, he's a black belt Brazi Brazilian jiu-jitsu exponent too from Carlson Gracie. Torres has got his right hand a little low, but could be part of his plan to encourage Ashida to come. That's about the sixth leg kick yep. that he's landed. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z in the corner there for Torres, calling it out for him, coaching well. Torres is really favoring the southpaw position now. You know, he didn't... Ooh, that's a nice head kick. Got Whoa. through the guy. Man, Torres didn't even flinch. Yep. All right, Sheeta decides to go. He's got that guillotine. There it is. <laughs> He's got the arm in, though. He's got yeah, the arm yeah. in, though. He might, go, he might go for the transition to the triangle. Let's see. He, <laughs> might, he might fake the arm in and then switch to the muscillotine with that high elbow. Let's see. He's bringing the leg on the shoulder. This is Torres' territory right now, Mike. This is where he thrives. He's going to go for the Kimura. He's looking for that transit. Oh, he's covering up. Good. Yeah. Well. Look at the experience. Look at the experience. He's going for the triangle. Yep. Nice transition by Torres. He's weaving and pummeling his eyes, legs through like arms. Ashida. Ashida doesn't want to know about it. No. Well, Torres Ash has come prepared, Mike. Ashida's two losses have come from Amba and Kimura. He's going to be careful. Obviously, Torres has studied his game. He went from that transition from the guillotine straight into that Kimura. Went for the triangle. Ashida backed up. That says a lot. Actions speak louder than words, Mike. One minute left, Mike. Round one. Oh, Torres is starting to come forward. Yeah, it's amazing how it's ebbed and flowed. Oh, oh that was nice a beautiful. Jeez, he really caught. Did he catch him? Yeah, I think that so. That overhand. Oh, he's going for that leg lock. Oh, he's sitting up on it. He's sitting up on it. It's deep. Oh, Ashida. He, he's got his trouble. back. He's got his back. Torres has got to watch his head here. He's trying to go to the back. Look at that leg tie he's got on that leg. <laughs> Ashida's doing so well to untangle that. Nice yep. defense there by Ashida. Okay, Torres, full guard. 33 seconds left, Mike. Round one, main event, Rebel 2. <laughs> In the last 20 seconds of this round now, Torres. Oh, it's just a pleasure, a privilege to watch these two guys go at it. He's swinging, he's swinging for the armbar. He might come out the other back. See those palm strikes to the ears? Yeah, and the elbows in there too. Wow. It's the end of round one. Man, lots What a brilliant of, display so far in Rebel. Look how he starts to spin off the cage. Look at that experience. Ashida knew he was in very, very, very dangerous guard, so... He's gonna he's gonna start standing up now. He's going, oh, forget it, forget that. And again, Torres laces that leg and goes to the back. I love this transition. Look how he laces the leg and he sits up. That's actually a leg crush. He had an actual uh, uh, like a calf slicer on him, but Ashida was able to undo it and then pull his leg out. That was beautiful defense there, Mike. Well, we talk about redemption. Will Chop coming off his UFC contract, winning a fight earlier and. Grabbing his way back. What better place to start than Singapore at the Rebel Fighting Championship against Ashida, who's shown his nous as well. He's coming forward again, Mike. That didn't work for him in the first round. Let's see how it works in the second. If you think Torres is going to slow down and, and get tired, it ain't going to happen. And Torres also talking about using weights in the last few months at his gym, something he's never done before. This is his friends or his weights now. 
He's gone old school. That's what he said that word a few times. He goes, yep. I'm going old school, Frank. I'm going back to my roots. I'm spending, I get in the gym at 8 in the morning and I leave at 10.30 at night. You know, he's teaching the kids. He's teaching all of his programs. He just ate a nice leg kick there. I hope he's not shaken up too much by that. He's back in. He's back in. Looking good. Being offensive. Ashida's tough. Yeah. Certainly come here to play. That's for sure. Takahiro Ashida. Only had one loss in his oh, last ten fights, right Ashida. Hand. So obviously an improver in his career. Torres back to his orthodox position, Mike. He's got to stay on the outside of that front foot. See how he's circling left? That's what you do against southpaws. They never circle right. If you do, you've got to be quick and hands up, chin down. Yep. Ooh, oh, jeez. Oh, hey, parted his hair for him there, Ashida. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, Torres might be hurt. Slightly rocked, he I think. He might be hurt. Going on his back just to get a breather. Ashida realizes this could be his moment to strike. This is his opportunity, Mike. Ashida's like got him hurt. Let's Cobra. see what he can do. And he goes, Ashida. There's a good shot there from Ashida. Well, Torres seems okay. He's tough. <laughs> Gritty. Determined. He's motivated. It's been lifting. Oh, he's spinning for that armbar. Look how dangerous he looks when he goes up in the air like that. Uh, just amazing <sighs> suppleness of his body. Renowned for it, of course. Just his length of his tibia just gives him the opportunity to control him so much more when he wraps those legs around his back. But he doesn't even need him right now. Foot on the hips, keep him away. He's trying to keep his head closer to his stomach than on his chest. Ashida wants to get his head on his chest so he has more leverage and more weight and more control. Strategy, man. This ain't no meathead game. This is science. Mm. He's going to try and stand. Look, look, Torres is going to try and stand. He might look for... Oh, Ashida's got his back. Dangerous he's going to roll. Here. He's going to roll out. Nice recovery. Yeah. Beautiful recovery there. See the respect Ashida has for, for uh, Torres' guard. Two minutes, Mike. Two minutes, round two. Oh. His leg. Kick's looking dangerous. Torres does not want to get in the way of one of those. Oh, oh. beautiful body shot. <laughs> oh, Torres on top. That sucked the air out of Ashida. Gasping. He's got the Kimura grip. He's going to the base. He's doing the crucifix right now. He can elbow him here. He can go for a choke. It's up to him. He's going for the choke. He's going to try and get under the chin. He's going to control. Look how he's got the arm controlled on the far side right there. He's got, the, uh, he's got the leg controlled right there. He's going to use that right arm under the chin. He's going to tra he can transition to the back. He's got a body triangle in. This is terrible for Ashida. Feels like he's got about three men on him at the moment, I'm sure, Ashida. Like he's got seven appendages. <laughs> he's like an octopus. He's got that body triangle in. If he wants to squeeze it, he's going to start slowly like an anaconda, squeezing, squeezing the air out of Ashida. Yep. Here now we go. He goes for the he's net. going for the kill. Going back to the elbow. He can transition to the armbar from here. He can go to a Kimura from here. He can go for the neck, rear naked choke. He can transition to the mount. There's so many options for Torres right now. And he's so patient. That's the dangerous thing here for Ashida. He's got a whole minute. He's a consummate professional. He's going to take his time. He's going to take his time. He's ready. Look at how he's picking his shots. Look at yep. this. Those elbows. Ashida. He's just going to wait, bide his time. He's got that handcuff in now. See that handcuff when he's controlling that wrist? On top of that wrist from the bottom, see that underneath position? That's called a handcuff, Mike. He's going to hold that, control that arm. He can't even defend with it. 30 seconds to finish if he can. Now it looks like Ashina might escape this one. The bell might be his friend here, 20 seconds. He's got him in the lockdown. He might be transitioning to the twister. Well, just the oh, it's right there if he wants it. It's right there. The twister's right there. He's going to the back again. Ultimate control. Back up to the mount. He's transitioning to the mount. Just He's going to run out of time. Left. Now, good work from Ashidi. You've got to say, such a dangerous position there. But he had the knowledge, the experience to hold on for the bell. So brilliant from Torres, but also worthy stuff from Ashida, that's for sure. Torres is trying to break him, Mike. Look at Ashida. He's tired. He's gasping. Torres is fine. He was resting. He may have even been using that round, the back position, just to get a little bit of, of rest and respite. There he goes. That's where he hurt him on the top yep. of the head. Yep. I think it was more an equilibrium type of thing, Mike. Yeah, yeah. 
But as again, you know, Torres, what a guard, what a weapon to have for attack and also defense. But then he has him up against the cage. He gets a top position. This is where he transitions to the back. Round three. The best fighters do. They take notes. Second by second, Mike. Second by second. Oh, oh brutal stand up by Tor. Oh, head oh. kick by Ashida. Ashida showing his determination. He's not giving up. Torres has got to stay focused in the in the in the pocket. He can't let Ashida land those shins like that. Oh. Well, we'll have a breather so that Ashida can get a breather here. Let's see the replay. It's nasty when you get one in that zone. And, uh, well, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. There's no foxing there from Ashida. Well, he's ready to go. I think he wants to take advantage of the fact that he may have hurt him in that, in that um, transition. Yes. He's back to Southpaw. Moving forward with great purpose, Ashida. Again. Again, he's looking for that Kimura position. He's rolling, he's rolling back to guard. He might have a triangle here. He's threatening with that triangle. He's controlling. Oh, he pops out and he pops back in. Torres swinging for the armbar this time. So sweaty here. Humid conditions in Singapore. It's really hard to get some of these holds in. Torres relentless with the attack off his back. That's what jiu-jitsu should look like when you have an attack off your back, Mike. Not just laying there and just trying to wait for a stand-up. Yeah, we saw that earlier, or, the inexperience. You know, he's controlling yeah. the posture. Yeah. He's going after Ashida the whole time. Look at that. Using the cage to push away, creating space. Showing his class and experience here. Ashida, just an absolute warrior, hanging in there. There's certainly no lack of determination from the Japanese athlete, that's for sure. Saw his mate Uchimura. Take a victory oh, earlier this evening. Vicious elbows on the top by Torres. He's got that right foot on the hip. He's going to use that to keep. That's an anti-stack device, Mike. What that does is that if, uh, if Ashida wants to try and stand up and stack, he's going to keep him away with that, that right foot so he can start using that left foot to do all sorts of funky things. Set up triangles, arm bars, pummel him with it, put a butterfly in, flip him, sweep him over. He's got a lot of options with one foot. Look how he's got those feet on the hips. You see how he's trying to stand up and put pressure? He just holds him off, holds him off, almost like a forklift. Oh, man, it's, it's a, certainly a class, an eye-opener for MMA for arm fans. Look, he's looking for arm bars. Oh, that's his weakness. Ashida lost his two fights with his arms. Weakness or not, Mike, you know, um, he's, he's still in the fight. It's round three with Torres, yeah. one of the greatest uh, bantamweights ever, and he's still in there, still throwing, still pushing Torres. What's well, a big purse here for this featherweight knockout competition. Nice elbow from the bottom. Good ground and pound off the top by Ashida. Well, we thought Ashida was tired, didn't we, at the end of the last round. Boy, has he come back. Guns are blazing here. It's interesting, you know, if the, the, the judges can be viewing this as Ashida winning. Yeah. But look how offensive Torres' guard from is. From his back, yeah. That's what it should look like, Mike. Here he goes. Torres back on his feet. Nice work. Ashida he had a just long look at the, at the clock. clock. Yeah. Where is the clock? There's no clock on the screen at the moment, Mike. So we're in guest land here. I would imagine we're about two maybe minutes. two minutes, yeah. two, two and a half minutes. I think two minutes is a good call. Oh, oh big hurt. shot. No, nah, no. Nah. Just faking, yeah, though. Just usually faking. when they do that. Oh, nice body kick. Ashida senses every time that he goes in with artillery yeah. that he, when he, he hurts, he backs him up. Yeah, Torres oh, looking a bit tired oh, too. beautiful. Oh. Beautiful single take there. Can he finish Duck it? No. shoot. Torres is going to sit out for this Kimura. He's going to try and make a, maybe a trance. If he sits out, he's going to try and transition to the back. If not, he's going to use this to maybe sweep. Let's see if he pops his head out. If not, he'll go backwards and pull him into his guard. Here he goes. He's going backwards, pulling him into his guard. What a fantastic treat this fight has been. For MMA fans in Singapore, the great Miguel Torres taking on the plucky challenger here, Takahiro Ashida. It's going to be fascinating to see what the yes. judges see. You Very know. Very much. One We're down to the last minute here. And what a fantastic clash this has been. Both fighters showing the tightness on their face, but Torres hammering away with his elbows. Yeah, don't forget, don't forget, Boss Rudin fought uh, Kevin Randleman. Uh, and in the UFC, and Boss Rutten beat him off his back by throwing a very similar game. Feet on the hips, elbows down on the dome. 
you know, th this could work for, for Torres. And you, know, you can see that Ashida is just trying to survive on top. You know, he's not really doing too much. He's not dominating, that's for sure. But he is on top, Mike. Yes. It depends how the judges see it. Well, it's a big conundrum here for the judges. Morgan Perkins, Brett Leming and Roger Chan. You can see them there on the side of the ring studying this one very closely. So final seconds in this battle royal at the Rebel Fighting Championship. Torres and Ishida. What a clash. The winner of this fight will take on Will Chop in the semi-finals at the next Rebel. Now that's the final hooter, Ashida. He's celebrating like he's won this. We'll have to see how the judges view it. This so is... both fighters with their arms in the air celebrating, saluting the crowd. Well, as you say, this is a really tough one for the judges. Torres with a look of concern on his face, but you'd imagine he'd be confident with his performance. So some of the highlights of this fight, we saw Ashida land some great shots. And certainly on its feet, Ashida probably having the better of the fight, but uh, as Frank Barker said, Torres on the ground, just superb defensive effort on his back. Torres with so much skill, so much experience, and just couldn't land one of these. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. It is a split decision. Judge number one had a 29-28, Torres. Judge number two, 29-28, Ashida. And judge number three had a 30-27 for your winner by split decision. Red corner, Miguel Yeah, Ashida's angry. He believes he's won this bout. He was on top for most of the clash, but Torres with some superb work on his back. Well, is there anyone you'd like to thank, Miguel? Uh, all my teammates, my family back home, my daughter Lana. Daddy's coming home, I love you. Uh, you know, I'm a much artist in my life. I've been here for seven years. I want to thank the promoter very much. He gave me the opportunity. I wouldn't be here without him, thank you. Well, it was a privilege for us to see you work. Uh, like I said, a lot of us have been fans for a long time. It's great to see you in the flesh, doing what you do, day in and out. It's great to see you go back to old school. Great to see you back to go to grassroots and to really represent tonight at Rebel. It's been an absolute privilege for us. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please. Your winner, main event, Miguel Torres.